What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp 2018 tutorial for you. So in this video I want to talk a little bit about the new reporting options and the new component attributes that show up in your model. So before I get started I do want to take a second and thank my supporters on Patreon. Patreon as you know is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. Um, so if you're interested in supporting the show, you like what I'm doing, please make sure to check out that link in the notes below. In addition, in, the, in any future videos that I do about layout, I do want to link to a couple different resources, um, a couple books and that sort of thing that do a really good job of walking you through the process of going from SketchUp to layout for creating architectural drawings. So make sure you check out the notes for those links as well. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the first thing I want to note is um, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed to admit I didn't realize that a lot of this reporting functionality was already in SketchUp. So you could already generate reports based on your entity names um, and your component definitions and that sort of thing to create um, um, door schedules and other stuff like that and we'll run through that a little bit um, in this video but in addition I just want to talk about um, some of the new stuff that they've added to the components and so one of the things that they added in the new version of SketchUp uh, SketchUp 2018 is the the new component attributes and so the attributes are things that get associated with objects like components so like for example if I created this box right here and I right clicked on it and I made it a component um, if you'll remember originally before 2018 you'd basically only get the information up to about right here so the alignment the definition that sort of thing well now what they've added is they've added these advanced attributes in your model so things like price and size and URL so URL is useful if you have something like a dishwasher or an appliance with a product name that sort of thing so that you can associate that and they also have these IFC codes which is useful for when you're exporting like an IFC file um, and that's just kind of a smart file that gets used in other programs but basically it allows you to associate information with your model that can then be opened in other programs and so what they have is they have these new attributes in here well, with these new attributes you can do some kind of interesting things so I wanted to run you through a couple different um, a couple different options for kinds of reports that you could make and also just see if you guys have any ideas for some stuff that you could do with this um, so the first thing is some of you may recognize the apartment model that I've been using for uh, some of my layout tutorials and basically what I did is I came in here and I made some changes um, I made the doors all different component types and I've also labeled them so if, if you go down here and look at my outliner for example all my doors are in their own group for doors and then they're now all component instances so all the three foot seven foot doors are copies of the same component and you can see that by looking at these brackets where it says three foot by seven foot door and then in addition I've named each door individually so each door has its own instance name which you can adjust up in the component section of your model so I can click on this and I could rename this like if I wanted this to be door like 34 I could rename that and that would show up as door 34 in my outliner so in addition to each one of these being a copy of the same component they also have their own individual name and that's something like a room number so a lot of doors in architectural plans get labeled by room so if this was a bigger model I'd probably have like door 113, 113A, 114 um, but basically this is how you can name your doors and so based on that I've also added a little bit of advanced information to each one of these objects so like for example the three foot by seven foot doors I've added a price per each of two hundred and fifty dollars and so if I go down to like the two foot seven door let's say those are gonna run two hundred twenty five dollars and then the sixteen seventy door or the one foot six by seven foot is gonna run two hundred dollars then I could also associate a cost with my sliding door and we'll call that like fifteen hundred dollars or something like that and so basically the reason that we're adding that is because we want to create a report um, or a couple different reports now that we have this kind of organized this way and so in order to do that what you're gonna do is you're gonna go up to file generate report and what's going to pop up is it's going to pop up this uh, basically report manager where you can manage different reports. So you can create things like door schedules or you can create a quantity report. There's a lot of different things you can do with this. And I just wanted to show you a couple of the different options. And so first off, let's create probably the simplest kind of report, which is going to be a door schedule. And so in this case, I've created a couple of these already, but we're just going to go to this create new template option. What that's going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to adjust what's in our report. 
And so like, for example, right now, what you've got is you've got your selection. So that filters what's going to get added to your report. You've got your component nesting levels, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then you've got all of the different attributes that you can add in here. And what seems to be new, I believe, is this new group attribute option, which we'll talk about a little bit. Um, but also the objects like size and price, stuff that got added as a new, um, as the new component attributes is in here as well. And if any of you know what these objects down below are, I would love to know what they do because I, I haven't really been able to figure that one out. So if any of you know that, let me know. But basically what you can do is you can create a report based on whatever information you want. So in this case, what I'm going to say is I'm going to create a report that shows the entity name, the definition name. And for right now, let's go ahead and add price and quantity. And so we're going to run this report and see what it spits out. And the issue is, since we haven't grouped anything, this is basically going to report everything in our model. Every single group and component in our model at any level is showing up in here. So you can see how all of these things I brought in from the 3D warehouse, those are all showing up on the list. Everything is showing up on that list. So this has way more information than we need, so we're going to have to cut it down a little bit. And you can see if you scroll off to the right, things like the price and the quantity are showing up in here as well so you can see how those doors each one of them that I set at $250 is showing up in the price column and so the first thing we want to do is if you wanted to you could try grouping these by definition name so that would make this a little more manageable so if I was to drag this definition name it doesn't seem to want to let me there we go sometimes I have trouble when I drag this up it doesn't it basically tells me I can't drag anything in here and then I have to try again. So when I drag this up, now if we group everything by definition name, what that's going to do is that's going to group all of your objects by name. So in this case, you can see how what that's doing is now, instead of having an individual item for every three foot by seven foot door, um, this has grouped them all into one object. And if you scroll off to the right, that also shows that your quantity is summed up over here on the right hand column and one thing I don't really like is it didn't seem to adjust the price and so the first thing we can do or we could try anyway is if you go into your price and click on the little gear it gives you three options so actually four options or one option up here and then three options down below and so you can set what that column is called in your report and you can also total everything like for example right now this sets everything up as a set of strings or a set of objects in here. Um, so if you had two objects at $200, two more objects at $500, basically what that would do is that would show each one of those se separately. You could also set this up where it would be a set of subtotals. So like it would be $600 for this object here, 1000 for the object here. So it would basically do the math on this. Or you can set this as a total sum. And so we're going to try the total sum and click accept and then run our report again. So now if I scroll off to the right, you can see how this is giving us a total for our price here in this object. So now basically you can total up your prices. And so we'll talk about that more in a minute. But for right now, what we want to do, first of all, because we want to set this as a door schedule. And so what we want to do, um, you can definitely mess around with the group buys if you want to. But in this case, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to set my selection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside my model and I'm going to click on my doors section. And if I move this out of the way, you can see how that selected all of the objects in my doors group. So now this is going to run based on my current selection, which is my doors. So now if I run this report, what that does instead is you can see how it basically gives me an object for every single group in here. So it gives me the doors group, and then it gives me a three foot by seven foot door, and then each one of these also shows up as a swing. So we don't necessarily want the swings to show up. That's something we set up for layout so that we can see what's in our, or we can see the door swings in a two dimensional view. And so the other thing we want to change is this component nesting level. And so we're going to check this box for component nesting level, and we're going to set that to two. And I'm going to run my report and you can see how now each one of those doors is showing up. And basically the reason that worked is because we told SketchUp 
to work with this selection, so this set of doors. And then we said, also only show the objects set at a nesting level of two. So in SketchUp's mind, this group here is the first nesting level. So if I was to set that to one, you'd get a single object for doors. If I set that for two, it's basically saying, okay, take everything that's nested at a second level in here. So group one, and then everything in here is inside that group. So that's the second nested group. And it's gonna run that to show all of our doors individually. And like, for example, each one of these doors also has a swing in it. So if we set it to run to a component nesting level of three, all you'd get is a whole bunch of swings. So you need to make sure you set that nesting level properly. But then once you do that, you can run this report and all of your different doors will show up. And one thing I'm really not liking about this is I want my entity name to show up first. And the other thing is I also want my size to show up. And so if you remember what I did in each one of these objects is I set my size. So that's one of the new advanced attributes that shows up in here. So I don't necessarily want the definition to show up at all. And so there's two things I could do with that. I could either remove it completely or I could move it to the back. But what I want my report to show is I want it to show my entity name. I want it to show the size that I set, then the quantity, then the price. So you can adjust what order those are in by clicking these up or down arrows. So if I run that report now, you can see I have the wrong object selected. So the first thing I need to do is select my doors group. Make sure these are all set to current selection and component nesting level of two and click run report. And you can see how now what that does is that gives me a report that shows my entity name, my door size, my quantity, and then my price. And you can see how over here I've got my definition name showing up as well. Probably if I was gonna bring that into layout, I would go ahead and remove that. But so this is one kind of report that you can create. So once you have this report set up the way that you want it to be set up, you can click save changes and you could name this door schedule and you can click save to model. And once you do that, now when you come in here, you can run that report. So this will show up in your list and you can click run and it'll immediately run that report. And if you need to adjust anything, you can click go back in order to, and you can go to edit to edit the report. So you can change the way all of this works. So that's one, one kind of report that you can run here and you can export that to layout. I may talk about that in a future video, but for right now, I wanna create a new kind of report. And the new kind of report is maybe I don't want a report that shows me each door individually, I may want a report that rolls up all of my different door types into a single object, so like a quantity report. And so what I would do is I would set a report to the current selection, I'd set the nesting levels to two, and I'd bring over the same information. So I'd bring over um, definition name, entity name, price, size, and quantity. So I'd bring those objects in and I'd set them up the same way. So right now, if I run that report, that's just gonna give me my door schedule. Well, what I wanna do in this case is I want to roll these up by either size or by definition name. So we'll go ahead and what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag our definition name up to my group by option. And so what that's gonna do is now that's gonna group everything in here by definition. So now if I run this, it's gonna give me a total in here based on my definition name. So in this case, I have a count of all of the one foot six, the two foot, the three foot, and the six foot four inch doors. And so now I can get a quantity in here or a count of each type. I could also group those by size. It would do the same thing. But if you didn't want to group that, like if you didn't want your definition name to show up in here, you could also move your size up here and you could run that report. And what that would do is that would roll everything up by size. And then you'd have your entity names in here, which you could also remove if you wanted to, if you just wanted a count of each door by type you could drag this in here and that'll roll up your quantity. And so that's another kind of report that you can run is a door size report. And so in this case, all I would do is I would just run this as, or I would save this as door size report. 
and you can go ahead and click save to model and I think you can export these to other models I haven't really tried that but so you can quickly run a door size report and like let's say for example that I came into my model and just as an example I know this doesn't make a ton of sense but let's say I added five more doors in here so now I should have five more three foot by seven foot doors well now if I generate that report I just go into generate report I click door size report and I run it and the one thing about this is you do have to make sure that you have the right group selected so I have to make sure I select the doors report and there may be a better way to do this with the group by I haven't really messed around with that too much but in this case all I have to know is just select my doors group and run this and you can see how now since I have more doors you can see how my quantities in here so now I have a count of my three foot seven two foot so that'll adjust as you add objects in here as long as you're bringing them in in the same way and keeping them in the same group. So you can create reports like that. And then the other thing you could do if you wanted to is I'm going to duplicate this report. So I'm just going to click dupl duplicate. And in this case, I'm going to call this one door cost report. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this report so that my quantity or my price instead of being set as a set of strings because right now what this is doing when you run the report is it's just telling you okay these all have a cost associated with them of two hundred and fifty dollars and so what I'm gonna do in this case because I don't want this to show these costs individually I want it to sum them up and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna set my price to a total sum and I'm gonna click accept and so now what that's gonna do instead of giving me the cost for each individual door that's going to give me a total and so if we were to check our math like if we were to run this in the calculator for example we have 14 doors and we know that each one of them was set at 250 dollars a door and so if i hit enter on that you can see how my price checks out on my door so you can use this to total up your door costs as well and so now i have a report in here for door cost i have a door size report and I have a door schedule that'll show me the schedule of my different objects so by doing this with this new reporting option there's a lot of new interesting things you can do with SketchUp leave a comment below let me know what you think is this something you could see yourself using do you have some ideas for how to use this I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys if you like this video please remember to click that like button down below if you're new around here remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week if you like what I'm doing on this channel please consider supporting me on patreon every little bit helps even if it's only a dollar a month but in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.